this time on the latest procedure. Human heart valves, tissue-thin membranes that beat five to six billion times in an average life, each beat regulating blood flow throughout the human body. Nearly 300,000 people in the U.S. suffer from a condition called aortic valve stenosis, where the aortic valve is thickened and hardened, usually from calcium amassing over time. When this happens, the valve will neither open fully nor close fully, severely reducing the heart's ability to pump blood to the rest of the body. Traditionally, treatment for this condition has been invasive surgical valve replacement. Today, however, a new technique is emerging, a procedure that trades in saws and scalpels for new, less invasive catheter-based technology. The latest procedure, transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Hi, I'm your host, Jim Sissel, and welcome to the latest procedure. Today we're going to be showing you an actual transcatheter aortic valve replacement surgery, commonly referred to as TAVR. Now, for decades, the only treatment for those afflicted with aortic valve stenosis was invasive surgery. But now there's a new option being developed. I'm joined today by interventional cardiologist David Rysak, who is the Director of Heart and Vascular Medicine for Scottsdale Healthcare Hospitals, located in Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome, Dr. Rising. Thank you. Before we talk about the traditional open heart surgery procedure and the new TAVR procedure, let's talk a little bit about the valve disease itself. What's it involved? What are the symptoms? What are the problems? Aortic valve stenosis is a closing off of the aortic valve. If you look at some of the images we have, the aortic valve is a one-way door out of the heart. And you can see here a normal aortic valve that opens wide open, and it's a very thin structure. You can see that with aortic valve stenosis, the valve leaflets begin to thicken, and they become immobile. In other words, they don't open all the way. This can lead to a lot of symptoms, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, and fatigue for patients. And the older you are, the more likely you are to develop aortic valvular stenosis. Traditionally, the therapy for aortic valve stenosis has been surgical. It's still the gold standard, and what it requires is for the surgeon, the open heart surgeon, to saw the chest open, spread the ribs and the muscles, and what the surgeon does is he cuts out or removes, he extracts the old aortic valve and can sew in a metal valve or a tissue valve, an aortic valve prosthesis. In the latest procedure, TAVR, we can create a minimally invasive incision into the groin area. We can then pass a transcatheter valve mounted on a balloon up to the diseased valve. And once the valve mounted on the balloon is dilated into place, the balloon is then deflated and removed, leaving a new valve prosthesis or a new aortic valve in position. Looking at a more complete assessment, we make an incision through the leg and through the femoral artery, a wire is passed up the aorta, and then the next portion of the procedure is to actually place a balloon, similar to what's used in balloon angioplasty of the coronary arteries, only larger, and then that balloon is dilated and dilates the valve to create an opening, if you will, to place the transcatheter valve or to place the new valve prosthesis. The transcatheter valve, which is mounted on a balloon, is then placed through the old valve, or the native valve as we call it. The valve is dilated on a balloon. The balloon is then deflated and retrieved, and left in place is this new valve prosthesis. Again, this is very different and far less invasive than traditional valve surgery. Is there any chance that that could come loose in there? Most of the concern about the valve coming loose 
is when you first implant it. There generally is not a great concern after it's implanted successfully that it's going to move one direction or the other. It really, once it's implanted, it really generally doesn't move.